Welcome to the Unstuck Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Miner. This weekly no fluff mindset show arms you with the practical tools you need to get unstuck so you can get exactly what you want out of life. Remember, when you change your mind, your life will follow. Let's get into today's episode. Hey there, friends. Thank you all for joining me today on this episode of Unstuck. Happy to have you here, as always. Today, we're going to talk about probably the most important topic I could ever discuss here on the podcast, the most important episode I will ever put out of the podcast. It's not going to be our typical, fun, happy, lighthearted episode. This is going to be a tough episode for all of us. It's going to be an uncomfortable episode for a lot of us. And I'm going to call you to action. I'm calling myself to action. And I'm hoping that you join me in this action. Um, it's going to be an episode really sharing why I am not okay. And why if you are a white woman, you shouldn't be okay either. We've had episodes about it being okay to not be okay. And this is one of those times that we shouldn't be okay. And we can actually use our not okayness to take action. This episode is mainly directed to white women or women who have been quote unquote passed as white, which I have learned is kind of the the wording or the phrase that's used when a non-white person has the physical qualities that make others group them into the white race. I just learned this actual term a few days ago in reading a book that I'll share with you, the book that I'm reading. Uh, if you are a black woman listening, I want to take this moment with you and apologize. Let's start with that. I want to apologize with every fiber of my being. I've tried four times now to record what I'm about to say and can't seem to make it all the way through. So please bear with me. We need to hear this. We all need to hear this. We all need to repeat this. So I will try once again. If you are a black woman listening, I want to take this moment that I have with you now and apologize with every fiber of my being. I'm sorry for not being there for you, your family, and your friends. I'm sorry for not fighting for you. I commit to doing better. I commit to using my voice. I commit to continuing to learn and understand. I know you are angry. I know you are wary. I know you are tired. And I know these words probably still sound empty but I can only hope that with my continued action, I will eventually convey my commitment to you. And for everyone here listening, before we get into what I want to share today, you should also know that I have chosen to mute myself this week in order to amplify the work of people of color. Kind of hard to do when you have a podcast, but this is why I'm going to limit what I say in this episode and instead showcase and highlight the work of others. This is work we need to start doing as white women. This is my call to action for you. And in future episodes, I will come back and discuss anti-racism work that I am doing beyond this that I share with you today. So there will be future episodes on this topic. There will be future posts on social media on this topic, sharing what I am doing, what I have learned, how I'm taking action. But today, for this week, for this episode, I commit to silence. I commit to sharing the work of others and amplifying their work that quite frankly they've been doing for years and years and years and not gotten the recognition they deserve. So let's get into it. I'm sure I'm not the only one that has gone through these heavy emotions the past few weeks. Sadness, anger, frustration, embarrassment, shame, grief, just kind of a sampling of what's going on for me. I don't even think that 
covers it fully, to be honest. Every time I hear about another person of color getting killed, arrested, beaten, attacked for no reason, my heart breaks, as I'm sure it does for many of you. That sadness and anger take over that frustration at our broken system and the confusion as to how this could still be going on. But what I'm now realizing is that I haven't done anything with those emotions. I feel them, I experience them, but they don't propel me into taking action. I, to be completely honest, I just thought that me thinking I wasn't racist was enough. Like that I felt inclusive of all people, then that was me doing my part. And so now, not only do I have these emotions of sadness and heartbreak and anger and frustration at everything that has happened, but now I also have found shame and embarrassment. I'm ashamed and embarrassed that it took me this long to take part in anti-racism. I'm ashamed it took me this long to know that just me thinking I wasn't racist was enough. That me having black friends and black romantic partners and treating everyone equally was me doing my part. I'm embarrassed at that. And I'm angry at myself for being part of the problem because of that. For safely staying in my place of white privilege unknowingly instead of getting mad that that privilege still exists and taking action. Here's the thing, though. I'm feeling these emotions now, and now I am using them to spur my action. Yes, I am late. I'm too late, honestly, and I'm regretful of that. But I now can see very clearly how my inaction is perpetuating the problem, and I'm done. I am taking action. I'm committed to taking an active role in anti-racism. The role that really all white women need to take. It is our responsibility as people of privilege to take action now. It is not the responsibility, the sole responsibility of black people. We need to do our part, which is a big, big, big part. We need to take that on. So I'm committing to doing better and I hope that in hearing this or in just seeing what you have already seen on social media, there's just been so much movement here in the past few weeks, which I think is very promising and and very good to see. I hope that you commit to doing better too. We need to show up for our black friends in ways we never have before. We need to get uncomfortable. We need to examine what we're not doing and why. We need to become aware of how we're sitting in our privilege instead of disrupting it. I hope you're with me. I hope you will continue to be with me. I hope we can do this together. As I mentioned, I'm muting myself this week. So instead of me going any further, I've already taken up 10 minutes of being not muted. I want to showcase others work. If you're like me right now, you are in this stage of educating yourself and building awareness. We talk about awareness here a lot on Unstuck. It's the first step to pretty much everything that we need to do uh, for our mindset, for ourselves, for the future. We have to build awareness. And so if you are not currently acting out in anti-racism, which is not the same as not being racist or thinking you are not racist, anti-racism, if this is where you are, you have to start with the stage of education and awareness. We have so much more to learn, my friends. We have so many women who have put their entire lives work and energy into building tools for us to learn. And we've been ignoring it. It's been out there for years. People's heart and soul put into saving their race. And we've been 
turning our eyes from it. None, not intentionally. I do want to make it clear that most of what I'm saying today is not intentional. Some of it, maybe yes, but a lot of it is just built into our system, built into our culture. And this is where we really have some dismantling to do. So will you make the commitment to learning more with me? I have some ways for you to get started. This is a very small list uh, in comparison to what's out there. This is a small list uh, because I find that when I share a ton of resources, like the longer the list, the less action is taken. When there are a few directives, when it's kept pretty small, it's easier for people to start doing. And that is what I want to come out of this list and of this episode. I will be sharing all the links to everything in the show notes and in an email. So if you get my emails, you will receive uh, this list in email form where you can easily click on everything. So let's start with some articles, some blog posts that I have found. This is from Rachel Ricketts. It's on her website, which I will have linked. And there are 25 different articles from all different people on just the topic of addressing whiteness, anti-racism resources on addressing our white privilege and kind of breaking that down. I found this to be a wonderful place to start. Rachel also has two courses that I am taking right now. They are online courses, kind of webinar type format with some action steps and tools. Uh, The titles of them are Spiritual Activism 101 and 102. So really pertinent for this group because of that spirituality uh, intermixed with the activism. I really love the combination of those two. So that's something you can look into. The next thing is more of a monthly type Patreon account where you get new information, new tools, new action items every month at The Great Unlearn. That's what it's called, The Great Unlearn by Rachel Cargill. Also something to look into. Uh, She also, Rachel Cargill, did a free public address on the topic, which you can now find on YouTube or through her Instagram. I will link to both of those in the show notes and in my email. Books. I think books are incredibly helpful right now. I'm halfway through one and I feel like my eyes have been shot open, just a whole new reality, a whole new world that I am learning more and more about each day. Uh, The book that I'm reading right now is called White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. Highly recommend that. The other books that are on my list that I will be reading after, Me and White Supremacy by Layla Syed. So you want to talk about race, Igeoma Oluo. Raising White Kids, Jennifer Harvey. This is a very critical book for all of the parents out there. We have to get this to stop here. We can do that by teaching our children. Not only teaching our children, showing our children. Let me correct myself there. Teaching and showing or teaching by showing actions. That's how we learn. We know that. And last book for now, I'm Still Here by Austin Channing. So that should give you some reading to do for the next few months, potentially, maybe a few weeks. That'd be great, too. As far as giving, giving is critical to the healing of our collective energy for ourselves, for others, for movements, We must give in any way that we can. If you are able to give financially, even if it's $5, giving financially is going to be critical right now. Here are some places that 
I have given that I think others may find. You really just have to find what resonates with you. But these are some options that I think have really good causes behind um, people of color. Black Lives Matter. You can do the national chapter. You can find your local chapter, which might feel a little bit more uh, resonant with you if you can find the local chapter of Black Lives Matter and donate there. Color of Change is wonderful. The Loveland Foundation. Uh, this focuses specifically on women and girls. So that might be something that speaks to you. Until Freedom more so deals with uh, legal response and political response, that kind of thing. That might be something that speaks to you. Know Your Rights Camp, which are camps put on specifically for young people of color to learn self-empowerment. And then, of course, NAACP is another option, too. So check those out. Again, linked to all of them. Find which one speaks to you or, or find a few that you can spread out your energy if that feels right, too. Remember, there are a ton more out there that need your support. There are, of course, specific uh, funds for George Floyd. There are specific funds for others who have lost their lives. That might speak more to you as well. There's a lot of options. You've got to find a place that really feels aligned with uh, your energy and then use your energy and give to others. And at minimum, I think what we can do is follow, like I said, we're about right now in the stage of learning and building awareness. So following others who have these messages to share, who have been doing this work for years and years, it's really their sole purpose. Follow these people on social media and learn from them. Now, what I want to say before you uh, start following these people, I want to give a little bit bit of advice that you need to take. (laughs) Consider this non-optional advice. These people are angry and rightfully so. They are angry that it took us this long to show up. Don't approach them. Don't approach their message or what they have to share with your walls up, with your defensiveness up, with you thinking that you know something that you don't, please approach their feeds with compassion and love and openness and learn from them by supporting them, supporting their work, not asking questions when you can Google your question or their question has been answered in products or services that they offer. If they have something that you can purchase to get your answer and to learn more and to build your awareness, purchase it. Purchase their offerings. Do not ask tons of questions. Do not go into their DMs and ask them to explain themselves. Purchase their work. That is how we will learn. That is also how we can support. And that is also how we can connect and grow. Remember, money is energy. We are putting our energy out there to heal the collective right now. All right. So here are some accounts that I have found to be very helpful right now. A very small list, again, of the people out there doing some incredible work These are just a few of the many women and men out there doing the work. And I do want to mention here that because this is a female-oriented podcast and my teachings are more female-oriented or those that identify as female, that's not to say that there is not incredible work and there are not incredible people that we need to follow that are male or identify as male. It does not mean that my message doesn't pertain to males or that this work doesn't need to be done by males because it does. But since this is the group here, the unstuck community here, 
that is primarily women, that is what I'm focusing on today. As I mentioned, some of the other work that I have shared by Rachel Ricketts, she is also a wonderful person to follow on Instagram. I am Rachel Ricketts. Rachel Cargill mentioned her before. She's another great uh, leader in this space, Rachel.Cargill on Instagram. Layla Syed at Layla F. Syed on Instagram. The Conscious Kid at The Conscious Kid, especially for those parents out there, but really everyone should be following over there. Tamika Mallory at Tamika D. Mallory. Alicia McCullough at Black and Embodied. Check Your Privilege at CK Your Privilege. Cleo Wade at Cleo Wade, who I will also mention. I've been following her for years. She's also very much into the mindset, spirituality, the kind of work that we do here, very much into that. So uh, wonderful follow there. Austin Channing at Austin Channing. Sonia Taylor at Sonia Renee Taylor. These are all on Instagram. And Sonia is actually a gal. I read her book, gosh, probably about a year ago, maybe a little more. She's about uh, body positivity, body neutrality. So another great person. She has a a book, My Body is Not an Apology, I believe, something along those lines. And I read that book quite a while ago uh, to expand my knowledge about body positivity. And that was a wonderful book, wonderful person and you'll have a lot to learn from her as well in that category. So all of these ladies have work in anti-racism, in understanding and breaking down white privilege. Again, learn from them, be open, put down your walls and just absorb and take action on what they have for you as far as services and offerings and learnings and teachings, take action on it. Don't just put them in your feed so they're in your feed. Take action on what they have for you. And I would recommend you also do your own work to find people that resonate with you, uh, to find books that resonate with you and articles and things like that. I think that was one of the biggest eye openers for me, right, you know, in the past few weeks is when George Floyd died, I, my first reaction, of course, having all those emotions, but then also thinking, what can I do? What am I supposed to do? Someone tell me what to do and I'll do it, which just goes with my privilege that someone else has to tell me what to do and who to follow and what to read and where to be when I need to take action. I need to do the work to find out how I can help. It's not up to someone else to tell me what to do. And yes, I've given you a lot of tools and things that you can start with, but I also want you to take your own action and do your own research and your own digging to find out what, what resonates most with you, how you can best help. You can Google things. You can search hashtags on social media. I found that to be really helpful. You can dig f- through the feeds of these other women to find uh, their colleagues and see if those resonate with you. Like You can do this work yourself, and I'd highly encourage that as well. So I'm going to leave you with everything that I just said in my time of silence here. Please take at least one thing that I just listed and go do something with it. Go read, go follow, go get educated, go listen, purchase, donate, support. This is a start of a new paradigm. This is just the beginning. And this is where change will start happening, change that needed to happen hundreds of years ago. We can start now. Yes, we're late, but we can start now. So go get started. And as I said, I will be back in another episode to talk in more detail about what I've been learning about anti-racism, what I've been doing, what we can do in the future as a collective. But for now, I want to support the work 
of the people of color, the people out there that have been doing this for years, wanting us to take action for years, I want to support them. So let's humbly educate ourselves first, and then we'll talk more about this coming up in the future. Commit to doing better right here, right now. Let's commit together to doing much, much better. All right, that's it for today's episode. Thank you all so, so much for being here, for taking down your walls, for getting uncomfortable, for feeling the feels, for doing the work, for committing. And I will see you all next week with another episode. Until then, take care. 